Hi, my third grade friends. It's Mrs. Real here again with another lesson about skeletons, bones, body, stuff. Last week I read you our kind of funny selling book, Cinderella Skeleton, and we talked about how we were going to start talking about the human body and the different le levels and layers and systems that are in it. Um, we also talked about some rhyming words and poems with Cinderella Skeleton, but today's book is more of a nonfiction book about primarily your skeleton. We're moving from Cinderella skeleton to regular bones and just skeleton in general. And then I have another book that I may be using for this lesson and the next lesson that has those clear, cool pages that overlay so you can see on top of your skeleton, you have some other stuff, and then over that it's covered with everything else. So we'll just spend a couple of times talking about bones and muscles and fun things. So today's first book is called a book about your skeleton. So we can kind of remember, you know, Cinderella skeleton of last week. There's the boy and the dog. When they look in the special mirror, there's their skeleton and the dog's skeleton on the inside. The dog's a little freaked out by looking at his skeleton, but that's okay. Here we go. A book about your skeleton. Everybody has bones. Everybody needs them. If you didn't have any bones, you would flop around like spaghetti. Your bones are hard and stiff. The rest of you is soft. The hard, stiff bones help hold the soft part up, and they give the soft part a shape. You can feel the hard, stiff bones that help hold you up and give your body its shape. Could you do these, these kinds of things if you were like spaghetti? So, you have more than 200 bones in your body. Long bones, short bones, flat bones, curved bones, little bones, big bones. There are bones in your head and bones in your toes and bones almost everywhere else in between. All of your bones put together are your skeleton. But a skeleton isn't just a pile of bones. This isn't a skeleton, neither is this. I think those are put together wrong. The bones have to be put together right. It's a good thing that bones are hard. If you bumped your head, you might get a headache, but the soft squashy brain inside your head would be safe. Your head bones are like a hard hat. They keep your brain from getting hurt. The bones in your head are your skull bones. Construction workers have to be extra careful, so they wear hard hats over their hard skulls. Mr. Real does construction. He has a hard hat because there are times when stuff might fall on it. He has to keep his brain protected more than just the skull bones that he has. Your heart and lungs are soft and squishy too, but nothing will happen to them, even when somebody hugs you too tight. The bones that curve around your chest keep your heart and lungs from getting hurt. The bones that curve around your chest are your ribs. You can feel them under your skin. Maybe you can even count them. Touch down here on your side and see if you can find your ribs. So all of the bones in your body are protecting, all, of, all the hard bones in your body are protecting the squishier, softer parts that are inside of them. We'll learn more about those next week. Every bone in your body is joined to at least one other bone. Put your thumb and first finger together, just like you're holding your pencil. Can you see where your fingers bend? You see those places where they bend? The bending places are where two bones are joined. The bending places are joints. Strong stretchy bands like big rubber bands hold the bones together. These bands are called ligaments. So each of these bones in your wrist and in this is your thumb your first finger your other fingers are back there each one touches at least one more bone the ones in the middle touch on each side and between each of the bones are the rubber bands that hold them together the ligaments that hold them together without the joints in your fingers your fingers would stick straight out if you can't bend your fingers then they will always stay like this and it would be like trying to 
I'm not sure I, I couldn't even do that because this is bending. It would have to stay just like this. You could never play ball or play the piano or button your buttons or peel a banana. Shoulders, elbows, and wrists are joints. So are hips and ankles and knees. How many things can you think of that these joints help you do? If you're thinking of things that don't involve standing still, you're exactly right. But guess what? Your joints are holding your bones together too, so they help you stand up straight. Well, other joints in other parts of your body also help you move. You can twist and turn and touch your toes because you have joints in your backbone. Your backbone is made of many little bones called vertebrae. Another name for backbone is spine. Reach around and feel your spine or your backbone. There's a lot of little bones that run up and down there. You can open and close your mouth because you have two important joints in your skull. Put your fingers in front of your ears to feel them. All right, I'm gonna turn the book over right now so it doesn't lose our place. But if you put your fingers right here in front of your ears and open and close your mouth, that's where your jaw is jointed together. That's so you can talk and so you can eat. Both important things. There are other places in your skull where bones are joined, but these joints do not move. So the whole top of your head is a skull bone, but when you're born, it's in little, it's in smaller pieces. And then as you grow, it grows and it starts fusing together. So it's all one piece, but it has like a seam, like where your clothes are sewed together. It has kind of an, an edge where they touched each other and grew together. Because you're not done growing when you're born, you're just getting started on some things. Your bones help you move and your joints help you move, but you couldn't move. You couldn't even stand if you didn't have muscles too. Your muscles make your bones move. The muscles are attached to your bones. They pull on the bones to move them. It takes many muscles just to take one step or to wiggle one of your toes. Are you guys wiggling your toes? Because as soon as I read that, that's exactly what I do. It takes a lot of muscles to make those ligaments and bones move. Your skeleton began growing before you were born. It wasn't hard and bony then. It was made of soft, rubbery cartilage. If you want to know what cartilage feels like, pinch the end of your nose or bend your ear. Do you feel how in this part of your ear, it's kind of hard, but it's sort of squishy and you can move it around? The end of your nose is exactly the same. Bit by bit, your skeleton got a little harder. Bones began to take the place of the soft cartilage. After you were born, your bones kept on getting harder. There was less and less cartilage in them. It says this baby's bones are still soft and rubbery. Your bones are getting harder all the time and they are getting bigger too. Your growing bones are helping to make you bigger and taller. They will keep on growing until bone has replaced almost all of the cartilage. Even adult has some cartilage. At the ends of some bones, it's kind of a rubbery part to help keep it protected, in the ears and the nose, and in a few other places. It says some of the things you eat help your growing bones get harder and stronger. That's why it's good to eat healthy foods most of the time. How old will you be when you stop growing? That's hard to say. Most likely the bones in your legs will keep on growing and make you taller until you are somewhere between 14 and 18. Your arm bones will stop growing at about the same time as your leg bones, but your hands and your feet may grow for another year or two. Most girls stop growing before most boys do, but almost everyone finishes all of their growing by the time they are 19 or 20. When your bones are fully grown, they will be stronger than granite rock. But even though bones are strong, bones can break. What happens if you break a bone in your leg? The doctor puts the broken parts together and you get a cast to wear. You can ask your friends to sign this cast, then you wait for the bones to heal. The cast keeps the broken bone from jiggling around. The bone will mend itself 
just kind of grows some more right into the places to hold it back together like glue. An x-ray picture will show the doctor how well the bone is healing. And I've been told that if you've ever broken a bone, raise your hand if you have, that the place where your bone was broken and it grew back together and healed is probably stronger than when the original bone was there. Fun fact. No matter how big or how small a bone is, and no matter how it is shaped, there are spaces inside the bone. The big long bones in your arms and your legs have big long spaces inside of them. So this is like if you had took a bone that was inside of you and cut it in half and opened it up so you could see in the middle. So this is the joint part where it joins in. This looks like a hip bone. This is where it goes into your hip and this is where your knee is. So this is what the inside of a leg bone looks like. Blood cells are made at both ends of the bone and blood cells are made here too, but only while you are growing. At the ends of these bones, there are tiny spaces, like the spaces in a sponge. You know the little holes that are in the sponge? Other bones have tiny spaces too. The spaces are filled with a mushy material called bone marrow. Red bone marrow is where blood cells are made. Pretty cool. Our bodies are pretty amazing. So if you've ever had like a piece of ham that has that little circle bone on the inside of it. If you have just a slice of ham and it has that round circly bone, the kind of whitish creamy colored gooey stuff in the middle of that bone is the bone marrow part. So your bones do more than hold you up and help you move and give your body a shape and protect your squashy insides. Your bones also help make your blood. These bones are busy, they have a big job to do. There are 206 bones in the human skeleton. I really want that number to stick in my brain. It said at the beginning there were more than 200, so 206 is the exact count. Every bone has a name. In a real skeleton, the bones are white. The bones in this picture, though, have different colors to make it easier to tell them apart. So on this page, they're colored so that we can see where each one attaches and how it fits in. And this is your skull. This is your collarbone. If you feel right up here on your chest, right where your neck, I'm just to sit up in my chair a little bit so you can see, right here where your neck is and you can feel there's a bone right here and there's another one on this side where your collar of your shirt is, that is your collarbone. It's kind of at the top of your rib cage area. There's an arm bone, your lower arms, you have two bones in the bottom half, all of your hand bones. You have a shoulder blade, that's the one on your back that pokes out, you've got one on each side. Call them your wings. The breastbone is the one right down the middle where your ribs come together. All the ribs, you can't see them all from the front, but there are 12 ribs on each side of your chest. Your backbone, also called your spine starts at the neck and goes all the way down the back. At the very end of your spine, it's called your tailbone. If you've ever fallen down and landed on your bum really hard and you hurt, it hurt like a bone in there, that was your tailbone there. Your hip bones are right here. Your legs connect into your hip bones. So this is your thigh bone, your kneecap, your shin and calf bones, and then your foot bones. Those are just the bones that the areas that they are. If we look on this next page, each of those bones has a scientific name. I know some of them. Your skull is your cranium. There's a game called cranium because it makes you work your brain. Your shoulder, your shoulder, no, your collarbone is also called your clavicle. This top arm bone is your humerus. The bottom two arm bones are the ulna and the radius. Your spine bones are called vertebrae. Your, what do they call it on this side? Your shoulder blade, the parts on the back, are called scapulas. The breastbone is called a sternum. 
don't know how to say this word from your rib bones. It's C-O-S-T-A-E. I'm saying it, I think it would be coste, would be your rib bones. Your spinal column, also called your vertebral column. It's where your vertebra live. That tailbone at the end of it is called your coccyx. Your pelvic bones is the sacrum and the innominate bone. Your leg bones, oh, I didn't get your carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and phalanges make up your finger bones. Your big bone in your top of your leg is your femur. Your knee is also called your patella. The two bones in the bottom of your leg are your tibia and fibula. And in your feet, you have tarsal bones, metatarsal bones, and phalanges. Phalanges are for toes and fingers. Pretty interesting. So in my other book that I have here, it's pretty cool because it has the clear pages that lift up and go on top. So this is showing pretty much the skeletal system we were just looking at in this other book, but that's more of a drawing. This is kind of like realistic looking picture. So your head, your neck, your arm, your hands, your legs, your feet, your shoulders, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, your fingers, your thighs, and your calves. There's pages over here that we can add next week that show those squishy inside soft parts that are gonna go in. We talked a little bit about your bones help you make blood. We're gonna talk more about the whole blood system next week. This next picture is all of your muscles. It looks a little freaky, don't freak out. It's pink like bubble gum but it looks a little weird because they have the eye places because you have muscles holding your eyes in and hold, helping your eyes move, but it's not showing the eyeballs. So don't freak out. It's kind of a cool picture that shows all of your muscles. So the muscles that are right here go on top of all the bones and the squishy stuff on the inside to keep you all together and moving. Pretty cool, huh? So this is called the human body. It's got all kinds of fun overlays in it that we can talk about again next week. So my friends, if you are interested in this at all, because we didn't get to, we're not gonna get to do a lot with it. I can read you a few books. I can show you a few fun overlays. You've got all kinds of other learning stuff that you're doing. If you have access on a computer when nobody else needs to be working off of it or doing school off of it. And if you haven't been totally going crazy with your screen time, it might be kind of fun to look up some of the names of those bones and muscles or a project where you could do some muscles. Next week, or no, sorry, bones. Um, next week, maybe I'll have some time, <coughs> sorry, to organize some links where you can go find, I know you can like do your skeleton out of Q-tips or all kinds of fun things that you could do. So um, if this is interesting to you, know that we have one more lesson and then you might have to go do some work on your own if it's still really, really cool and you wanna find out more, we can definitely help you do that. So until I see you again next time, my friends, with some more about the soft, squishy inner parts and some of the blood things in your body, have a great week. See you later, bye-bye.